Hey guys, what is going on? It's Fen here again. So today I'm going to be talking about how to um, fix seams in your mesh with body paint. Now there's a lot of programs out there that can do this a lot better than body paint, but it's built into Cinema 4D, so you might as well use it if you don't have the option of using something else like um, Modo, um, ZBrush, Mudbox, Mari, etc. So anything that allows you to paint onto your models. Um, someone named Tiago sent me this model that he's working on, and he has a seam that he can't get rid of. Um, the way to minimize seams is to UV your models correctly. Um, and to make sure that your model is actually modelled correctly because uh, it is quite um, a big thing when it comes to subdividing. Um, I'll give you just a rundown of what's wrong with this model um, and then we'll go into getting rid of this seam which is kind of enhanced here by this blue streak. Um, now for some reason, I'm not sure if it's native to Cinema 4D or if it's just uh, my graphics card, um, but the texture here is really... 8-bit um, it's really really poor quality but when we render out you can see the, the texture is a lot better I'm not sure why this is um, it might have to do with my settings I'm not quite sure um, but just so you know that the texture isn't this poor um, so let's first thing go on to the model because the model itself um, isn't modeled in the greatest aspect so let me explain why um, when subdividing, you take each polygon and you split it in two. So this polygon here, which is almost square, which is what you need to aim for, this will be divided straight down the middle and straight down the um, center. Um, so left and right. So you're basically putting a plus in this. So then you will have four squares instead of just one. And how many subdivisions you have, each square will be divided again. So you can see how quickly the polygon count can increase, um, which is good when you're trying to smooth a model out. Um, but when it comes to something like this polygon, which is very, very long, um, it's going to cut this in the middle. Um, I might be able to show you actually with this hyper nerves. Um, so let me take this down to um, zero, which is our base mesh. If we add one, you can see this has been cut down to make four. This one has been cut down to make four. But we get the this small one here, this long one, then this long one, and then this smaller but still long one. If we subdivide that again, you can see these have been um, increased and they're equal, which is good. However, these ones are still problematic because they are so long. So where you have evenly distributed um, polygons, in a lot of other places, they're very um, long still, and that's definitely something you want to stay away from um, because it does help when you have even polygons uh, for UVs and texturing, um, and when you're subdividing, um, animating, just everything really. So it's really important that you understand that aspect. Um, also, on the end here, we have an issue where the um, edges are actually um, triangles which isn't something you want to have because you're going to get really um, oddly shaped stuff here when you do apply the hyper nerves um, so if I just turn off the shading you might not be able to see it but you can see we've got this very sharp point here um, and also you might not be able to see it because of the texture um, but you do have slight bumps around the edge and that's just because of how this has been put together. Um, if we take a look at the um, UVs as well, the UVs are the best as well. Um, the way um, Tiago has done them is the method um, which in you make seams and then you unwrap it. Now that's mainly used for uh, faces like organic object. Because this isn't an organic object, because it's a hard surface object, it's made out of metal, um, you don't want to use this method. You're better off using the method in projection, such as cylindrical, because this is a cylindrical object. Um, <clears throat> if you do want tutorials on how to um, UV an object um, similar to this, then let me know and I will put up a tutorial about that. 
So now we've gone over all of the details, let's jump over to BP3D pin layout and this will give us the option. And um, this is release 15. Um, I believe this is the one Diego is using and um, that's why it's opened in R15. Um, in most of my recent tutorials I've been using R14 just because I know a lot of people haven't upgraded to R15 yet. So in here we have this issue, um, if I do a render view, we have this exaggerated seam. Now this seam was actually um, drawn in Photoshop in a straight line, but as you can see his UVs are actually um, kind of skewing off to the side, which again isn't good, especially when you're trying to paint accurate details such as logos, um, specific scratches and just the specific details which is what UVs are made for. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use a few things, but first let's set up um, our scene here because the BPUV edit um, and the BP um, 3D paint, they do work together really well. Um, however, I don't know, it, it, it lacks a lot of easily functionality really, um, but I'll try to walk you through the best I can. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the lines, we don't need to see them. I'm going to go to material and I'm going to turn on the material, by default it's actually turned off. Um, and then I'm going to go to layers and you can see in the layers we now have this material that is directly on this object and we can create new materials if we want which is pretty cool and um, so what we need to do is we need to make sure that the 3d paint mode is actually turned on we also need to make sure projection painting is actually turned on as well. The reason we need this to be turned on is because we're going to be check, um, project excuse me, the texture onto here. But in our terms, what we're going to do is we're actually going to clone the texture onto here. And you need to enable the projection um, painting in order to, to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the clone tool. And the clone tool works similar to uh, the one in Photoshop if you've ever used that. Um, when you click it first off, it'll give this little um, pointer, which is pretty much just marking where you're going to clone from. Once you've cloned from that, it'll give you the brush, and then you can, of course, go in and paint it. If you want to source from a different area, you use the control key to click and then let go, and you can continue brushing. So, one of the cool features about um, the um, body paint is that if you go to render you can actually use the ray brush render view which will give you a render of your scene and um, it's, it's very low quality as you can see but you can still paint on this which is really really cool so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the brush size because I want this to be a little bit bigger and I also want to go into the brush itself and I want to change the brush to um, something a little bit grungier to kind of match this um, texture because if we're going to be using a smooth um, fall off, it's not going to work as well. Um, so the spacing, again, you can play with this. Um, these settings are pretty much down to you. It's obviously scenes um, specific. Um, the pressure here is basically how um, hard the, um, the texture will show through. So it's pretty much the opacity. Now, if you've got a Wacom, this would be extremely easy for you. I'm going to be doing it with the mouse. So I'm going to probably put it at 50% just to keep it safe. I'm going to hold control down, click here, and then I'm going to paint. And what it's doing is it's actually took some of that, but it's actually put some of it back as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to up the opacity to about 85. Sample that area again and just go over it. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to blend this in as best as possible. And I'm taking it slowly and I'm slowly getting rid of this um, scene, this horrible scene that we don't want. And as you can see, I'm just clicking and dragging, clicking and dragging. And this will work with anything. So if you've got any seams, this will work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rotate around. And as you can see, it does take a little while to update. Um, and it is a little bit slow, but that again, that could be my computer, is pretty old. So I'm going to go to Raybrush Render View again, render that out. And this might happen. Um, I don't know why this happens, but when you go back into ray tracing, uh, you have to sample before you clone, otherwise you're going to get this white streak. So I'm going to press Control Z to undo that. Um, I'm going to Control Click to get a new source, and then I'm going to 
pretty much just go in here and I'm going to turn this up to 100%. I think 100% will work just fine. And I'm sampling different areas to keep the same um, kind of colors in the same area. Um, and again, you can do this for your entire object. It does take a little bit to update, um, so make sure you move around often. And once you've done that, you can come out of projection paint and it will be saved then, but you have to come out of it in order for it to um, to work, basically. Um, if we go back to the original setup, which is what I like to do because um, if I just go back to the paint, you'll probably get this issue. So I'll just go to render view and you'll see if I go over it, it starts changing color and stuff. I'm not sure why this happens. Um, <clears throat> again, it could be a bug inside Cinema 4D or it could be my graphics card. I'm not quite sure. Um, but what I like to do to fix this is go over to the start user and then I like to click on this object which will kind of load everything back into this layout and then when I go to render everything will be perfect so as you can see um, you know we've got a little bit of repeating pattern here but again if you took more time um, obviously used some different settings you can get away with obviously using this method which is extremely helpful um, and does help when you have stubborn seams um, you know looking through this model it looks pretty good right now um, you can go in and obviously edit that um, you can't just edit the um, sorry you, you can just edit the um, the diffuse but if you go into the uh, BP pod body paint you can actually go into the material and if you go into the drop down menu you can see the normal uh, and diffuse here so you can either draw on the normal or diffuse um, which is quite cool to be honest um, if you can't see this functionality here, just go to function and make sure which one is it? Ooh, doo, 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 doo. I believe it's hmm. There's a set in here. Ah, I think it's under yeah, it's under edit, not function. So under edit, you want to use this one here, layer manager expand compact. Um, I think by default it's actually on compact, so you can't actually see your different layers. Um, so if you go to edit and go to expand and compact, you can see all the different layers. Uh, so you've got your alpha in here as well, which of course you can't see over here. So that might be helpful. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, there's not much really to say um, you know, about the rest of it because... And that's pretty much all the tutorial is about. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys found this helpful. Um, uh, make sure you hit the thumbs up and obviously leave a comment. Um, and if you've got any questions, again, leave a comment. And if you need any specific help, um, then you can contact me on Facebook, which is forward slash Fenimation. And um, I will catch you guys in the next episode. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I will catch you next time. Peace.